Dr. Mindy here, and let's talk about Fast Training Week. So coming up next week, we are doing Fast Training Week. And if you're new to my channel, this is where we take five days every month and we come together as a community and we experiment with different fasts. This week, we're going back to one of my favorite fasts. I think it's actually, you guys have also expressed how much you love this fast, which is autophagy fasting. So if you're new to my channel, let me just say welcome. I am here to teach you everything you need to know about building a fasting lifestyle. And if you love this video, please send it out into the world. We are trying to get everybody immune strong and fasting is an incredible way, not only to achieve your health goals, but to keep your immune system strong, to prevent disease, to get the mind working right. There are so many benefits of fasting and that's what we're, we're here to teach you all. So let's dive into autophagy fasting. Okay, I wanna answer three things when I lay out what autophagy fasting is here. The first, I wanna talk about, well, why did I choose autophagy fasting? I wanna explain why this is the most important fast you can be doing right now. Second thing I wanna talk about is, okay, well, how do you do autophagy fasting? I'll lay that out, and I know a lot of you are expert fasters, and then I know some of you are brand new. So this fits for, for both categories. And then the third thing I wanna talk about, and this is one that our community has asked over and over and over again, which is how do you measure autophagy? Well, what am I looking for? And I have some really cool new twists to autophagy that we're gonna do as a community in this fast training week. So those of you who've been done autophagy fasting before, don't shut off the video. I got another measurement we're gonna look at this time around. So let's start with this. Why did I pick autophagy fasting? So if you're new to fasting, what I want you to think about when you step into a fasting lifestyle is that the longer you go in a fast, it is like turning on switches, like light switches of healing inside your body. So for example, at 15 hours, you usually turn on the ketogenic metabolic energy pathway. Your body starts making ketones at 15 hours. You start making more growth hormone at 15 hours. At 17 hours, we turn on autophagy, and I'll dive into that in a moment. At 24 hours, we turn on intestinal stem cells. 36 hours, you're telling your body to go find this, the glucose and the insulin it's stored in fat and burn more fat. 48 hours, you're turning on dopamine pathways. So these switches get turned on as we fast. Well, this week, we're gonna focus on this autophagy switch. And autophagy, gets turned on at 17 hours. Now, if you've been following me for a while and actually thinking this whole thing through, the way I've set up autophagy fasting is so that autophagy is turned on and stays on for these whole five days because there are other things that will stimulate autophagy um, along with fasting for 17 hours. Like we've got to keep our protein load down, breaking your fast with fat, those kind of principles come into play when we look at autophagy over a five day period. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. I think you're probably thinking, but wait, I thought I was supposed to go in and out of autophagy. Yes, but remember, we, the reason I chose this fast for the new year is because what most people do is over the holidays, they fall out of routine, they get, their health goes downhill, and when they hit January, they're looking for a cleanse. The best cleanse you can do when it comes to fasting is autophagy fasting. Because what autophagy is, is at 17 hours, you're turning on the intelligence inside your cells that is saying, hey, let me clean up inside of here. Let me repair mitochondria, let me repair membranes. And if there are any bad bacteria or viruses within that cell that are damaging the cell, that the autophagy will get rid of those, we call them pathogens, those bacteria, those viruses, it will kill them and get rid of them. The other thing really powerful about autophagy is that when the intelligence gets turned on inside the cell, a lot of times that intelligence looks around and it says, this cell's really in bad shape. It's on a course to be a cancer cell. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it. And it creates cellular death. 
So as we move through this week, I am going to unravel each one of these key components of autophagy because there's so much for us to learn within just the topic of autophagy. So what you're doing is turning on an intelligence that is repairing these, your cells. When we're done with these five days, we'll talk about feasting and what some proper feasting strategies are post autophagy. So, but for these five days, this is what we're doing. You are going 17 hours without food. So I know what you're thinking. What about coffee? What about tea? These are questions we're going to answer as the week goes on. But the general rule is if you want maximum autophagy, you would actually do very little uh, tea, coffee, uh, especially coffee with cream and fat in it. I know we've talked a lot about this, um, but when it comes to autophagy, we do know that coffee can stimulate autophagy. So if you want to have coffee without your cream, this may be a good time to try it. Um, it's coffee has got an, a, an autophagy slant to it when you do it as a health food, meaning no toxins in it. Um, so if you want to have some tea, you want to have some coffee during this autophagy week in minimal amounts, fine. If you want the purest way to do this fast, you don't, you won't do anything. And for 17 hours, you'll just drink water. So I'm just giving you guys, there's a little bit of a variation to this week. So 17 hours, you're fasting. Now, when you uh, break your fast, what you're going to do is you're going to break it with fat. Why are we breaking it with fat? Because usually at that point, your brain is like, I'm hungry. Okay, I get to eat 17 hours. Now let me go forward and eat. And when you go to eat, you tend to open up that eating window and then you're just eating, 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 eating. And then we're, you're struggling to manage your fast the next day. When you strategically break a fast with fat, what happens is you satiate the brain, so the brain is not hungry, and you'll stay in a state of ketosis longer. You'll see that your blood sugar will stay down, and you will see that your ketones will continue to go up. Many people believe this keeps you in autophagy longer. So now that we're going to unpack that one little piece of what fat does to autophagy. So if I've sparked more questions uh, for you, sit tight as the week goes on. We're going to look at fat and autophagy. Now, after 17 hours of, of fasting, you break it with fat. I want you to wait at least an hour before you open up your eating window. So you can, you, you eat your fat. From the moment that last bit of fat goes in your mouth, wait an hour. And then when you open up your eating window, here are your macros. So this is how the macros are going to work for autophagy fasting. For carbohydrates, you are going to do 50 grams of net carbs. Net. Remember that net is the total carbohydrate minus the fiber. The twist with autophagy fasting is you've, when we move to protein, you've got to keep your protein under 20 grams. If you do 17 hours of fasting, you break your fast with fat and your protein goes over 20 grams, you will kick yourself out of autophagy. So a critical part of autophagy is keeping protein under 20 grams. And then the third piece of this is keeping your fat up. So a lot of people, when they open up this eating window for autophagy, they lean into things like olives, because olives have no protein in them and they're pure fat. Um, avocados can be great for autophagy fasting. Oils like the Andreas seed oils can be really good. Some of the five seed oil, cause it'll keep your hunger down, but it will keep you in a state of autophagy and not pull you out of, of that sp specific state. So 60% of your food from fat, 20 grams of protein, 50 net carbs. Those are your macros, 17 hours of fasting and you're gonna break your fast with fat, and then you're gonna wait an hour. Those are the three principles to autophagy. If you do that every day this week, as you're going through this experience, you are likely to stay in autophagy the whole five days, which is awesome. Okay, now how do we measure this? So the traditional way that we measure is with a glucose reader, and I'd like you to, to measure in your glucose and your ketones when you first get up, and then I like you to measure right before your first meal. What we are looking for in that measurement is in general, we want to see your blood glucose be somewhere between 70 to 90 
and I want you over 0.5 in your ketones. This is what I've been saying traditionally. Um, the European uh, translation numbers I will put in the notes for you. So that's our traditional way. That second reading, what's really important is that glucose goes down and ketones go up. This is critical. That means your body's coming out of sugar burning mode and it's going into fat burning mode. So it's a sign this is happening. There's a traditional way to measure your blood glucose this week. If you're brand new to this or you haven't been measuring, this is how I want you to measure. Now, here's the twist. Those of you that have been doing this for a while and you're ready to take your autophagy fasting to a whole nother level, this week we are diving into the GKI index. I know I have resisted this one and the reason that I've resisted it is the GKI index, as many of you are gonna see, is a very tough measurement to get to. You wanna to get to what we call this one-to-one -one ratio. GKI index is very important for people who have cancer, people who have a chronic disease. It can get a little um, disheartening and hard to reach for those of us who are trying to just use this for brain health and energy and, and longevity. So, but for this week, I'm gonna dive into the GKI index. I'm gonna do a whole video on it, but let me give you an idea of what the GKI index is. You are gonna take your glucose number, you are gonna divide it by 18, that will give you a number. That number then gets divided by your ketones. And you are looking in general for your body to hit, let me give you the number, you, the best place to be for the GKI index is less than one. One to three is pretty good, that number is not bad. Three to six, now you're sort of falling, the, the ketogenic effects are minimal. Six to nine, you're in a very low level of ketosis. So we're gonna use this index this week to start to look at how we can get even better results with autophagy fasting. If everything that I just said is completely confusing, don't worry, because we've written it all out in the notes to this video. Join me in, on Instagram. We do little squares on this. So you guys that are visual learners like me, that you can look at a square and see it written out. But this week, autophagy fasting, this is what we're focusing on. The next level idea for those of you who've been doing it for a while, GKI index. And as always, if you guys wanna go deeper with this information, we are doing the Reset Experience where I'm gonna be taking you every week through a different fast and eating style. So it's, you can still join us, it's not too late, just put Reset Experience in the comments and we'll invite you in. Last thing, we want you guys to succeed at this. Hopefully you know this by now. Those of you who've been following me for a while. So my team put together a companion guide to this week's Fast Training Week. So everything I just said is gonna be on the companion guide. So if you want, and it's free, just put companion guide in your comments and my team will send you a link so you can get the companion guide and hear everything that I said. Next week, there's gonna be five videos that come out and we're gonna, one of them is gonna be GKI index. One of them I can tell you right now is gonna be autophagy and fat and how fat intake affects autophagy. So each day I will be breaking down a different scientific part of autophagy. So you are an autophagy expert by the end of next week. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss all five of those videos. Autophagy fasting, this has been one of the greatest fasts that we have ever done. And again, as always, if you guys have done autophagy fasting before, let's encourage those that haven't, just put it in the notes. And as always, I love being on this journey with you and I never, ever, ever want you to lose hope or, or be in a state of fear around your health because you were born a ridiculous miracle. What we're trying to do here on my channel is teach you just how miraculous you're meant to be. Hope that helps.